Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Winchester Model 1906. This is what was considered a boy's rifle. It's kind of a short, compact rifle, and it's the little brother, or as my wife said, how do you know it's not the little sister? Anyways, it's the smaller version of the Winchester 1890, and a lot less fancy. It was made to be more affordable with a round barrel on it instead of the octagon barrel. That saves a little uh, money in, uh, saves a little expense in manufacturing it. Plus, they did not color case harden the frames on these. They just blued them, which still look pretty good. Of course, this one's a little rough, but um, the wood on this one is a little bit rough, and the butt stock has a little uh, chip in the plate on there, the butt plate. Um, other than that, and the inside of the barrel. The inside of the barrel on this one is really rough. And my whole intention when I got this was I was going to do a video on showing you how easy it was to clean up leading from the inside of the barrel. And I tried several different methods. I used a regular 22 caliber brush, which did not scrub very well. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to go, go ahead and use a 6.5 Creedmoor brush. Uh, I had a couple of them it, because 22 is 6 millimeter and 6.5, half a millimeter larger, it would get a tighter fit inside that barrel there and hopefully clean away some of the leading in there. Well, that failed, so I decided I was gonna look up some other methods and I tried different solvents and everything to go down in there and try to break up that lead and scrape it out. And then I resorted to these uh, Chore Boy copper uh, scrubbers. Now, you have to get the Chore Boy brand if you want them, and they do work. It's just the inside of this barrel is so rough that these didn't help much. And it's not just leading inside this barrel, but it's a lot of uh, rust inside there too. So I tried these tearing pieces off, wrapping it around that brush and scrubbing it back and forth through there. And again, that did not work. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and take this thing out to the range and see how it shoots. Because the first thing I did was try to clean it up and it was ineffective. So I took it out to the range and surprisingly, it shot really well. For as little rifling as left in this barrel, it really is pretty accurate and it functions. So the chamber on this one is in good condition too and it is able to feed and extract the 22 short shells in here. And this is chambered in 22 short only. Uh, also known as a gallery gun because back in the day you could have gone to the carnival or fair or whatever and they would have had actual firearms that you could use to shoot your little cast iron ducks and targets and everything that were probably moving along there and maybe win you a teddy bear or something. But this one is a, uh, it's a takedown version as most of them were and all you got to do is take this little screw right here, back it out, it's a captive unit so you're not going to lose it and you can go ahead and pull the two sections apart right there. Makes it easy to store, compact, whatever, if you're gonna take it out in the woods or what. I would probably leave it together if I was gonna do any small game hunting with it anyways. Putting it back together, you just gotta make sure you pick that screw up a little bit, slide it right back together, tighten that screw down, and it's ready to shoot. Has a pretty neat little locking me mechanism for the bolt there. It will not slide back if the hammer's cocked because the hammer pushes on the firing pin. The firing pin has a little latch inside there and that keeps that bolt from coming back. Uh, there is a safety position on it too. You can pull it back one click right there and it's the same thing. It's not gonna open and you're not gonna be able to fire it with it in the half cock position there. So you have to pull it all the way back to be able to fire it. It's rim fire, don't dry fire. These were not made out of the highest quality material. At least it was probably the highest quality of that day but now Firearms are made out of much better materials. So dry firing this will eventually damage the edge of the chamber there where the firing pin pinches the edge of the rimfire cartridge. We're gonna go ahead and take this thing out to the range and give it a few shots because I don't think I filmed any of that original stuff because I just wanted to try it and see if it actually functioned. Um, I did do a little short video where I'm firing it a few times and it seemed to function just fine. Anyways, let's get it out there on the range and take a few shots with it and see how it does. All right, we're out here on the range with the Winchester Model 1906. Like I said, this is a 22 short, and we're going to be firing some Aguila 22 Super Extra Short. These are 29 grain bullets. It does not tell me what the uh, feet per second is on here, but uh, they're probably somewhere around 1,000. And we're only going to put five rounds in here right now and just take five accuracy shots at the target 10 uh, yards away. And this is one of the National Rifle Association's... Uh, 
It is an official 50 yard small bore rifle target. It's a six inch outer circle with that black circle in the middle being four inches. Uh, got the five rounds in there. It is tube fed magazine on it. And let's go ahead and see how this thing does for accuracy. All right, now even though it's a 22 short, eyes and ears need to be on with this thing because hearing damage is cumulative and we don't wanna risk messing up the ears. So we'll go ahead and cock it and make sure it fed one up in the, the, uh, the elevator or lifter, and it did. So let's go ahead and take an accuracy shot here. Let's see, was that all five? I think it was. And I did dry fire, which is a bad thing to do to these old rifles, but uh, you know, one every now and then is probably not gonna kill it. But avoid it as much as you can anyways. Let's go up there and take a closer look at the target. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, and five. The elevation is pretty good. The windage is a little bit off there, and that could be me. But for as bad as that bore is, it's really not terrible. And the chamber's good, so it's actually able to cycle the rounds just fine. Let's do some offhand shots from the seven yard and see how it does. All right, now I just loaded another five rounds. That's all I put in there. I think this holds up to 15 rounds of 22 shorts, but we're just gonna do a little uh, reliability, the cycling part of it anyways. All right, there's five shots offhand, and it seemed to cycle just fine. I don't know if I could go any faster. I'm sure I could, but um, it's an old rifle, and I want to take good care of it and uh, keep it around for another 100 or so years anyways. It's a pretty fun one, that's for sure. Okay, so it does hold 15 rounds in there. I went ahead and put the full 15 rounds in there. And we're gonna take 15 shots at the steel target. Now, it's not gonna be really impressive and move that steel target around very much, but it is gonna make a nice little ting on there, I hope, if I hit it. Um, one of the nice things about 22 shorts is they're a lot of fun. They really are. Uh, they're not the cheapest. 22 long rifle is gonna be the cheapest rounds you can get but they're not as fun, I don't think, as 22 shorts because you can take these out places where you're not gonna disturb a whole lot of people with shooting these shorts. They are pretty darn quiet. And there's my 15 rounds, absolutely flawless. And uh, I think I hit every shot on there. And it's just a lot of fun. I really enjoy the uh, Winchester. I really enjoy 22 shorts. And um, I enjoyed making this video. If you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos and hit this little round button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for taking a look at the Winchester Model 1906 with me.